hello <laughs> welcome back to my channel today i am coming to you uh from my bed in my bedroom aka the only room in the house that gets sun after <laughs> four o'clock in the winter um it is also the coziest warmest room this time of day so i'm happy to be coming in here with the lovely dappled light and i wanted to talk to you guys about my 2020 favorites I love to spend some time at the end of the year reflecting on the favorite things that I discovered, read, found, bought, made. Um, I just think it's a fun way to reflect on the year that you had. And I also love watching other people's 2020 or yearly favorites videos because I always find cool stuff based on what people recommend. So I've got quite a little list today and i'm gonna get started so let's start with books i think i love to read should i turn should we turn let's see <laughs> i love to read um and i think you're gonna figure out about me very quickly that my favorite genre um, of books is what is probably considered women's fiction definitely romance um would have been chick lit back in the day when i first got really into reading chick lit um but if there is not a romance plot line in a book i can guarantee you that i do not want to read that book so that is me right there that is what i like to read and the book that i read this year that i just felt so seen by so understood by is beach read beach read is the story of a couple of writers who are reconnecting they've already met they haven't dated previously um but there was some attraction there and they are reconnecting as adults they knew each other in college and they've both kind of gone through some life traumas and they're working through those together um through their friendship and more <laughs> as someone who loves romance who loves writing who loves writing romance um this book is just a war cry for me and everything i believe in so i recommend everyone read this i love it i love it there was a moment when i was reading this admittedly after a few wine spritzers while floating on an inner tube in a lake that i almost started crying from just the joy of feeling seen by a book so um i think that counts as a resounding recommendation for beach read the other thing that i got really into reading wise this year again is um historicals i have read many historicals in the past but i'd kind of just taken a break from them they weren't what i was feeling in this moment and then this year i got back into them so i started with Sarah McLean's The Wicked and the Wallflower series. So fun. And then I read, I'm gonna forget the other book that I read. I wanna say it's The Rogue Not Taken. Oh my gosh, another series she wrote, I will put it in the comments below, that was so good and had all of my favorite tropes in it. And I just devoured this. I devoured all the books <laughs> that are available in the series. And then I started going through her backlog. So obsessed with Sarah McLean. If you love a Regency romance and you like a kick-ass kind of like feminist main character, I recommend these ones. And then, of course, like any respectable historical romance lover, I read the Bridgertons. I've only gotten book one and book two so far, and I've, of course, read them both in a matter of days um and then i ordered the next two from my favorite bookstore ever the ripped bodice um and was immediately informed that they were completely out of stock so i'm waiting to read the third and the fourth i think it's gonna be good for me to take a break in the series so i don't get kind of like over it um but i absolutely loved both of these i loved the Bridgerton Netflix series. That is my other favorite. We're getting to TV. Um, but if you're a Regency Romance fan, 
and you have not read the Bridgertons, like I had not, um, I highly recommend them. I feel like they go well, kind of tonally hand in hand with Sarah McLean. And I've listened to interviews where she talks about how, um, Sarah McLean talks about how Julia Quinn was able kind of as a, she was kind of a groundbreaking romance writer in her style and the heroes that she created and kind of paved the way for authors like Sarah McLean. So what did I love in books this year? I loved Beach Read. I think everyone should read Beach Read and maybe you won't feel seen in the same way I do. Um, but I hope you love it. And I hope everyone um, reads it and respects romance writing a little bit better. And then of course, historicals, particularly Julia Quinn and Sarah McLean. And I think honestly, you can read the backlog of all of those and you'll be perfectly happy. Okay. What else do we have on my list here? Then we get to Netflix shows. So obviously I mentioned Bridgerton. Uh, I loved Bridgerton so much. I was like working so hard not to go through it too quickly when I was reading it or watching it. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't do less than two episodes a night. It was amazing. I'm so happy it's doing well. I'm happy that everyone that I know and follow on Instagram is talking about it and sharing it. I think that that is the love and credit that it deserves because it's a great show and it's based on a great series and romance novels and books and plot lines and stories are equally valuable to everything else. So I'm so happy Bridgerton is doing well. That was one of my favorites this year. Um, the other is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. This is the sort of tween Sabrina reboot that came out last year. And I watched most of the first season and liked it and then fell off for some reason. And then we started watching it again this year and we're absolutely hooked. I love it. We binged the whole thing. Um, if you're watching this video now and you haven't watched it yet, you are so lucky because the third or the fourth season just came out. So you have even more to binge. The second sort of like third, third TV favorite that I love is Agatha Raisin. So <laughs> Agatha Raisin is a very popular, extensive, like murder mystery series based in the Cotswolds in England. Um, it's a book series first and foremost, and then um, Acorn TV turned it into a show. So <laughs> I got Acorn TV at the start of the pandemic because I felt like I needed something new and exciting in life and started watching Agatha Raisin and <laughs> I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Okay, the last movie TV favorite of mine from the year was The Prom. Oh, I watched The Prom. I mean, it only came out a month ago maybe. And I loved it. I love musicals so, so, so deeply. And it's been a long time since I've seen a new musical. Um, and we're certainly not going to see musicals live. Not that I did it that often before, but we're certainly not doing it now. Um, so, watching The Prom, which was a new to me musical and just feeling that joy all over again of musicals and singing and dancing and that sort of campy feel was absolutely the shot of adrenaline straight into my veins that I needed. And I made everyone watch it and I loved it so much. And then I watched it again the next day and I was singing all over and it is so fun. So if you haven't watched The Prom yet and you like a musical, that is fun and sort of self-deprecating and just a treat, <laughs> then watch The Prom on Netflix. All right, new category, fitness, health. <laughs> this category is unusual for me. I hate exercise, I hate fitness. It is the bane of my existence, not in my adult life, in my whole life. <laughs> um, but this year, something that really helped me feel balanced and peaceful, especially at the height of the pandemic, like we were in lockdown one a few months in and it started to feel for the first time like really endless, um, was walks, really long walks. <laughs> one of my coworkers happened to live next to me at the time. So we would go on these like multi-mile long walks together through our neighborhood and up hills and around. And, 
it was just the absolute perfect thing and it made me feel so healthy and it made my mental health feel totally different so walks i mean this isn't this is not groundbreaking stuff but like if you aren't a walker i wouldn't have considered myself a walker um get yourself a podcast find yourself a friend who lives semi close to you who you whom you can safely walk with and go on really long walks i was on a goal of getting 10,000 steps a day i was trying new mount and it's really, really, really hard to get 10,000 steps a day. But we would go on these crazy long walks and kind of get 10,000 steps in a day. And I will say more than anything, my mental health felt so good. So walks, long walks is a 2020 favorite. Um, and the other thing that is a 2020 favorite for me is at home spinning. I was getting really into a spin class at the start of the year. I was going like every day. And then the pandemic hit, so obviously I stopped spinning and um, tried to give walking a go, as we know. Um, but I was missing spinning. I was missing kind of that cardio kick that I got and that just like high that I would feel in a spinning class. So I have gotten myself just like a cheap at-home spin bike. I got it on Facebook Marketplace and I have it in my living room. It couldn't be uglier. <laughs> facing my TV and I use the Peloton app on my Apple TV and I do my spin classes and I did a challenge in December. I did 31 spin classes, one every day in December. I have a streak going. Um, I think I'm gonna keep it going through January and I love it. It makes me feel really good. I love that I can do on a great day, like a 45 minute class and I love that on the days that I am not feeling that or they don't have the time i can just hop on and do a 15 or 20 or a 30 minute class um it's been i don't know it just i've decided every day so it's taken the choice out of it and it's been so fun i love it okay other favorites okay under the ones that i have here right next to me <laughs> i was influenced by instagram to buy an olive and june nail kit i i mean i just got their ads so regularly that i couldn't resist it anymore and i also follow what kate finds on instagram and she became a crazy fan of olive and june so i was like i have to try it so they had a memorial day sale i bought the box with six polishes and i went off the deep end i think i painted my nails every week since may just just do it during the day once a week and I love it it brings me so much joy so I love the kit I do not know if it's necessarily um like insanely different or better than regular polish um they definitely market it as being like the best at home salon manicure that you can do so when I got it I definitely followed all their instructions and used everything and got sort of the best painted nails that I've ever been able to achieve, which is not saying much because I was actually horrifically bad at painting my nails before. Um, so I don't know if this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like maybe I just started to pay more attention to what I was doing and paint my nails slower, but I love this. It is maybe one of my most used purchases in 2020. Um, like I said, I painted my nails pretty much every week. Right now I just have like the EC like a clear healthy coat because I'm worried that I'm painting my nails too much um I love it I recommend it I recommend waiting for the sale to buy it because I think you can get 20% off and that's actually a pretty good deal but it's great I mean I love it so much that I bought the pedicure kit too I was like I don't need this and then look look where I am now <laughs> I can't speak to the pedicure kit yet I haven't used it quite enough but what I will say is, this is gonna be so gross, forgive me. It has this like foot cheese grater in it. Essentially it's like a pumice thing, but it's also like a microplane like for the kitchen for shaving, like pumicing your feet. And it is, this might be worth the cost of the box on its own. It is amazing, my feet are baby soft. So Olive in June is my 2020 favorite or one of them. I love them. I have 
so many colors now because I just keep buying them. <laughs> If you guys want to talk favorite Olive and June colors, most worn, most wearable, um, let me know. <laughs> can, can we get early into it? I would also recommend following What Kate Finds um, if you're curious because she does in-depth reviews of them, Pol tries all the polishes on. She's amazing at doing her own nails. I do not know how she's so good at it. It's impressive. But yeah, I was Instagram influenced into buying Olive and June and I don't regret it for one single second. Okay, the other sort of like thing that I was influenced to buy on Instagram is this Gorgiana necklace. I saw an author that I like wear it all the time and I was like, gosh, what is that cute necklace she's always wearing? I love a necklace like that. Um, Cause I had similar gold necklaces, but they're much thinner. And this one has like a chunky feel that I really liked. Um, and then one day she said it was from Gorgiana and I ordered it immediately and I love it. And I wear it every single day. I do not take it off, not even to shower. Um, and it makes me feel kind of like a little dressed up on the DL all the time. And I always get compliments on it. So it's a great piece. It's not terribly expensive. It's not terribly inexpensive. Um, but yeah, I love it. I've worn it just about every day for many, many, many months now. Okay. Another random but <laughs> fun favorite is my fanny pack. I did mention that I got into walks. And then as soon as I was like getting into walking, all of a sudden I was like, I, what do I do with all of my, my phone, my chapstick? Like, you know, I walk with my dog, so I have to have a hand free to hold her leash, um, whatever else, maybe a poop bag at some point, tragically. So I got this fanny pack. I absolutely love it. I don't think you have to get this fanny pack. Um, I would recommend it if you did want to get it, but I think the point is a fanny pack in general for walking. Now when I go on beach walks and stuff too, I just put my little credit card, my ID, my phone, my AirPods in my fanny pack and I, oh, my keys. And I walk around feeling like a free woman. I mean, if it was a little, if I could pull this off as everyday fashion, I might because it is so wearable and practical. And this one I will say, Though I don't think you need to get this particular fanny pack. Um, it's very lightweight, which is nice. So if you're a walker, if you're getting into long walks <laughs> for 2021, I couldn't recommend getting yourself a fanny pack anymore. Okay, so on the series of sort of like random recommendations, I want to talk about my vacuum. Oh my gosh. All right. This bad boy here is a knockoff of the Dyson vacuum. I got it because I wanted to be on the offense for spiders. And I thought this sort of long neck thing could help me get spiders in the corners, um, which it does. But what I've also discovered is that like vacuuming like this, kind of small cordless vacuuming is an amazing replacement for sweeping, which is what I was doing which now just feels like I was moving dust around. So I got this thing. It comes apart. It's very modular. This comes off. This comes off. It's all like one big thing that becomes another thing. <laughs> um, I have taken it traveling just as like a car vacuum or to vacuum an Airbnb. I love it so much. I will link the new version of this one. It's called... Deek, D-E-I-K. Um, I can't find the exact one that I got. I think they must have come out with a new version and they don't have this exact one anymore, but I will link the newer and better version of this one. I saw in the reviews that it was basically almost as good as a Dyson and like for the cost difference, I think this was like 90. Um, and the Dyson's like 300 something that the cost difference made it better than the Dyson. And I, I have no complaints. I love it. I feel free as a bird just walking around with my vacuum. So <laughs> if you um, want to kill spiders offensively, just get all those corners or just in general um, hate sweeping. I can't recommend this vacuum enough. I love it so much. I tell all my friends about it. I'm <laughs> just like, you guys have to get this vacuum. Okay. I put my last two favorites on the floor. I don't know why I did that, but one of them is Noon. 
um noon is a hydration tablet i don't know if you have to have this particular brand but this is the one that i've gotten and love um sometimes i just feel unquenchably thirsty i don't know if anyone else feels this way occasionally um, must be occasionally having too much salt or just I don't know, sometimes I drink a lot of water and I'm like, maybe I'm drinking too much water. Maybe I just need like something that hydrates me better than water. And here we are, noons. So I love these. I don't have one a day, but every time if I wake up and I just like don't feel 100%, noon. Um, they also have caffeine ones. I have tried that in the afternoon on a day when I just like can't when things just aren't happening for me. I'm just not there. We're not coming together. I have one of the caffeine noons and I feel amazing. <laughs> um, but in general, I do the no caffeine ones. It's the sport. It's essentially just, I don't know. What is it? There's a word for this. Electrolytes. It's just electrolytes. I love it. Um, also, maybe if you've had a few too many drinks one night and you know that the next day maybe it will be rough for you just saying take one at night maybe one in the morning it, it works what that's what i'm saying i'm saying it works it's amazing so get yourself some noon um they have it at sprouts whole foods amazon a lot of health food stores have it and then the last for potentially connection to the noon <laughs> um is a gin discovery of the year i love a gin and tonic i do love a gin and tonic and this gin was actually recommended to me by someone at venmo no bevmo <laughs> bevmo um it's called the empress gin it's actually purple it's flowered with pea pea flowers pea leaves then some it's very good it's very drinkable and it's at a very fair price point my favorite way to enjoy this gin is gin, tonic, I usually do the fever tree, um, and then half a grapefruit, just squeezed right in there, and also a grapefruit slice, and it is, it is so good. <laughs> I actually like to squeeze the grapefruit so a little bit of like the pulp gets in there so you can have like, a little bit of grapefruit pulp while you're drinking. Um, if you're a gin and tonic person, if you haven't tried this kind, it is, in my opinion, way better than all like the big Tanqueray, et cetera, um, gin brands out there. And it is stunning. So when you put it in with a tonic, it does this like really cool color gradation thing. And all your friends will be impressed. Okay, let me assess my list, but I think, I mean, I think I've talked for 20 minutes straight and that's everything. That's it guys, that's, that's all the things. That's what I loved this year. Um, what did you guys love this year? Was there anything that you just discovered? TV shows, books, anything that just felt groundbreaking? Tell me, tell me below, let's talk about it. Also, if you try any of these things that I have discovered, if you go watch Agatha Raisin and decide that maybe you want to move to the Cotswolds, please tell me, because I do too, and I want to talk to you about it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I'm coming back very soon. I'm going to be doing a digital declutter video. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day or start to your day wherever you are. And thank you for being here. Bye.